Hi everyone, I'm Mike Preston, Technical Marketing Architect here at Rubrik, and welcome back to our Rubrik and GraphQL video series. Thus far, we've explored some of the core GraphQL concepts such as queries and mutations, but we've done so within the confines of the Rubrik GraphQL playground. While this is great for testing and getting the proper syntax down for queries and whatnot, it really isn't ideal as we probably aren't going to create our automated scripts within that playground. So today, we're going to take all of that knowledge that we've learned thus far and break it open in a console and explore how to consume Rubrik's GraphQL APIs using PowerShell. So with that, let's dive in. All right. First up, I decided to do some PowerShell examples today as it's one of our most widely used SDKs within Rubrik. Tons of organizations leverage PowerShell for their automation needs. Now, we won't be using an SDK today, but instead we'll be issuing raw API calls into the Rubrik platform. I think it's important to understand how to consume APIs without the use of SDKs as there's often a lag between when an API is released versus when a commandlet actually gets built around it within the SDK. Now, don't get me wrong here. SDKs are super important and abstract away a ton of complexity, but understanding how to consume Rubrik GraphQL APIs without the SDK, you'll be able to speed up your development and not have any dependencies on Rubrik's development. So with that, let's head into VS Code and get started. All right, so this is a script we'll be walking through and it performs some pretty common functionality that I see customers leveraging Rubrik Automation for. Basically, it takes a virtual machine and assigns it to an SLA domain. So let's dig in. To start, we have some variables here at the top, pretty standard stuff. We have our VM that we wanna modify, the Rubrik cluster that it belongs to, along with the name of the SLA domain that we want to assign to it. We also have this URI variable defined, and this is basically the entry point into our GraphQL endpoint within Rubrik Security Cloud. Basically, take your Rubrik Security Cloud URL and append slash API slash GraphQL to the end, and you'll have the exact same URI that you need. Also, we have this function that I defined called invoke rubric GQL query. Now throughout this script, we'll have to make a few different API calls and there's some common work that we have to do to each and every call. So this function basically performs that common work for us. Now we can see it takes in a few parameters, a payload, which will basically be either the query, the mutation that we want to run, some variables if we're passing any information into that query or mutation, and as well as the path to data which is just a string that represents how we can drill into the response JSON to get to the actual useful data. So to help illustrate this, let's take a look at the query that returns a list of virtual machines. So it's formed, we have this data stanza, and then within that we have our vSphere VM new connection stanza, and then within that we have our nodes. And then finally inside nodes is where we see the actual useful data that we're looking for, the VMs. So the path to append parameter basically removes all of the useless sort of parent stanzas that we don't need. So it removes data, it removes vSphere VM new connection, and it'll remove the nodes and only return the list of VMs that we're looking for. So as far as some of this common work within this function, let's take a look. So it creates an empty hash table to store our actual request in, and then it takes our payload, which we're actually passing in as a string, and it basically strips out all of the new lines and replaces that with a space. This allows the Rubrik Security Cloud API engine to actually properly read the data. So then it takes both our payload, which is our query or mutation, as well as the variables that we pass, and it adds them into the body hash table. From there, it's just a matter of converting that body hash table to JSON format, which is required by the GraphQL API, and then it finally invokes the request passing in the URI, the body, and the headers. And I'll show you how headers are formed a bit later, so don't worry too much about that now. So from there, it takes a look at that path to data parameter to see if it's been passed, and if so, it'll strip away all that unneeded parent elements and just returns the data that we're looking for. All right, so that's it for the common function. Let's actually get into running some of our queries. So the first thing we need to do is authenticate to the Rubrik Security Cloud and grab an access token. 
Now this access token that we generate will be placed within the request headers and basically provides all the authentication and authorization that we need into the Rubrik Security Cloud. So the first step to obtain an access token is to create what's called a service account within Rubrik Security Cloud. So let's jump into RSC and do exactly that. So the first thing we need to do here is head to the gear icon and we'll select users and roles. From here, we can simply just select service accounts along the top. And now let's click to add a new service account. So we'll give our account a name and a description if we want. And then we select the role we want to apply to it. Now I'm gonna select administrator here, but certainly best practices would say, create a role with the least amount of privileges that this account needs to perform any given tasks and assign it that role. So after clicking add, we can see the account created successfully and it's displayed our client ID in secret as well as a URI that we need in order to gain access to the token. Now, rather than copy and paste all of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and select to download this as JSON. So jumping back into our code, we can see here on line 42 that we're importing that JSON file we just downloaded. That way our client ID and secret will all be stored within this service account object. Now, we need to define some headers. So in this case, we simply set what our content type would be that we're sending, which is JSON. Then we need to form our body or our payload. So within the body, we're gonna pass both our client ID as well as our client secret. And finally, we're gonna convert that body to JSON and we'll send the request through. So we can see here that we're using the URI specified within the service account JSON file as the URI that we wanna make the post request to. Now our response in this case gets stored into this response variable. And as we can see on line 60, we simply add the access token within that response into our headers. That way each and every request from here on in is gonna be properly authenticated and properly authorized. So with that, we can now start to gather some of the information that we need to add our VM to the given SLA domain. So the mutation that does this requires that we specify both the ID of the SLA along with the ID of the vSphere VM. So we have to go ahead and we have to get that information before we can actually perform our mutation. So let's start with the VM. So in order to get the ID for our VM, we actually need to get the ID of the Rubrik cluster that hosts it. As remember, we're dealing with Rubrik Security Cloud here, which has access to all of our Rubrik clusters, which have access to all of the same VMs. Therefore, we need to know the cluster ID that we wanna process this on in order to distinguish which VM that we would like to modify. So for this, we're gonna use a query design to get our cluster information. Now, for readability, I've chosen to actually break out all of my queries and mutations into separate files because they can get fairly long and they can really clog up your code screen. So we can see here, I'm reading in from the get cluster info GQL file. So let's have a quick look at that file. So hopefully this looks somewhat familiar, right? It's a pretty basic GraphQL query. We have a variable called cluster name that we need to pass into it. It runs the cluster connection query with the proper filters and it outputs both the ID and the name of the cluster that it finds. So pretty simple. So jumping back into our main file now, we can see we've stored our query into the query vari variable, and now we have to create a variables hash table, which will host all of the variables that we wanna pass into that query. So we have our cluster name here, and we're passing in our cluster name variable. So from there, it's just a matter of invoking that rubric GQL query function, passing it our query variables, and the data that we want to strip off of the response. So let's go ahead and run that. So first I'll load all of the code at the top here. And now let's perform the cluster query. So I'll highlight run this. All right, so no errors, that's good. And if we take a look at the actual cluster variable, we can see that we have the ID and name of our cluster. So this is perfect. So now we can move on into our next query. So now we're looking to get the ID of the virtual machine. So looking at this query, we can see we need to pass it our VM name along with our cluster ID, which we just retrieved. And then it's going to go ahead and return the ID and the name of our virtual machine. So again, let's go ahead and fill in our query variables here. This time we're gonna pass in our VM name as well as that cluster ID we just retrieved. And we'll go ahead and run these. And now let's look at that VM variable. And as we can see, we now have the VM ID that we need. 
So the very last query that we need to run is to get, to get the ID of the SLA domain that we want to assign to this VM. So again, looking at the query, it's pretty similar. Just one parameter coming in, which is the name of our SLA domain and returning the ID and the name that we need. So let's jump back and run all of this code. And again, let's take a look at the output in our SLA variable and there's our ID. So we have our VM ID and our SLA ID. So now we can move on to forming the actual mutation required to assign the SLA domain to the VM. So jumping into the mutation file, we can see again parameters defining the SLA domain ID as well as our VM ID and we're running the assign SLA mutation. And from here, we're gonna return the status or the success message from the assignment. So there's a number of other options we have hard coded in here, such as whether or not to apply the SLA to existing snapshots and whatnot as well, but we really don't have to go through them. We've passed it all the required information. So again, when we get back to our main file, we define our variables that we want to send and we simply invoke the mutation using our custom function. So let's run this and there we go. So now let's take a look at that response and we can see that we were indeed successful. And if we jump into the actual Rubrik Security Cloud UI, it actually shows us that the SLA domain has been applied there as well. So there you go. That's how you consume Rubrik GraphQL endpoints using PowerShell. Now there's a lot of moving parts here and honestly, you form those queries and mutations and everything can get kind of pretty finicky with the syntax and the quotes and escaping different characters but this is really about the most straightforward way that I found in order to get the job done. Now do keep in mind, you won't always have to form all of these big queries and mutations. In fact, we have a Rubrik Security Cloud PowerShell SDK, which abstracts away a lot of this complexity. And for most functions, I would totally recommend just using that. However, it's definitely a good idea to understand how to consume APIs raw as well, as sometimes there's a lag between what APIs are provided and what functionality we've developed within the SDK. And speaking of SDKs, that'll be the topic of our next video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.